One of the big themes that came out of Click Live in India was the power of artificial intelligence and its impact on people's work, especially on their jobs. One company hoping to ride the AI boom is iMerit, and its founder, Radha Basu, explained how AI won't just replace humans. It needs a human workforce to train the algorithms in the first place by clearly annotating training images like these. Could you explain to everyone here what iMerit does? In order for AI algorithms to work, they have to be trained. It's like computer programming. If you just put a computer there and say work, it doesn't work. So you have to program it. That's called training AI. What we do is train AI and enrich the data so that our clients can get the best results out of their AI algorithms. So you have a huge human workforce that training AI, and we've got some examples of the kind of things that your workers do that we'll, we'll put up on the screen here. So just, uh, this is some of the examples of what your humans are doing to create this training data. That's yeah? correct. We are called humans in the loop. Humans in the loop of AI. So it could be as simple as taking different cars in a, in a parking lot, doing bounding boxes around them, knowing which cars have damage, so being able to look at automatically picking that up and sending that like an insurance investigator would do. Now this is where we have probably done the most work. We've done more than 15 million images for self-driving autonomous cars. We work at the variety of car manufacturers and if you look at this, it's called bounding boxes and polygons, but it's at a pixel level, so it's dense pixel segmentation. So think, for example, there are a few toes onto the crosswalk. How do you know whether that belongs to a cat, to a small child? There's a wad of paper on the street. Do you know if it's a rock or a wad of paper? So when we do this pixel segmentation, it's very complex, and you can have up to 50 to 70 different things you're marking. So just to be clear then, you're training the AI, this is a person, this is a car, yes. and then it goes away and learns from that training So when data. the car looks at the street scene, we have trained the AI algorithm so that the computer can learn from it. For the first time, we have technologies in AI that can be used for crucial societal applications, particularly like healthcare. There are, in the amount of data, healthcare is about a third of the data. And the ability that we have, as you can see there, this is our work, where you actually can go in and look at cancer cells, and we actually annotate them in these images and use this to train the AI algorithms. And if you think about this in a broad societal sense, this can be taken to a large number of people who do not have access to this kind of care, and you can do pre-screening for cancer cells. What's really important is the type of person that you employ. So that, I think, is the, the core, um, I would say, the, the core contribution of iMerit. iMerit has 1,500 people, and we're hiring about 200 to 300 people a quarter. So AI is creating jobs. 50% of the workforce for a technology services company, 50% of the workforce are women. Yes. And 80% of the workforce are coming from low income backgrounds. They could be young Muslim women. We have one center that's called the Center of Excellence for Computer Vision. That's for image processing. And that center is all young Muslim women in a very poor community in Medjugorje. So you can imagine that this is creating jobs that right from the beginning is inclusive of the workforce. It has diversity and it has a lot of moral ethics that go with it. Okay, off.